Speaker, Sports Canada's policy to prevent harassment and abuse in sport hasn't been effective. Each week brings new headlines detailing old or new abuses that have come to light. Athletes and sports organizations are calling on this minister to establish an independent body able to investigate abuse and harassment. Instead of listening, she announced yet another code of conduct. Will this minister stop stalling and establish an independent investigative body for abuse allegations in all... Mr. Speaker, I am heartbroken for all the athletes who have suffered. Let me be clear, there is zero tolerance for abuse, discrimination or harassment of any kind in sport. That's why last June we introduced strong measures to end abuse, discrimination, and harassment in sport. And last week, for the first time in our country's history, a declaration was signed by all sport ministers from coast to coast to coast. The Red Deer Declaration will drive a systemic culture shift to prevent abuse, discrimination, and harassment in sport. Hmm, that's good news. <laughs> yeah. So CBC did an expose, 222 coaches over 20 years in amateur sports uh, convicted of sexual assault. Uh, as a pro athlete, you hear that. Like, what does that make you think, David? Yeah, it's absolutely heartbreaking because, you know, really, when, when, you, take, when you take sports, it really is kind of like a, like a microcosm for life. Like, everything is compacted and relationships are built very, very quickly. You know, when you're working in a team atmosphere where you have a coach that you trust that's leading you through these ups and these downs, you know, these victories and these defeats, they, they turn into someone that you really, you know, rely on and you build that relationship of trust. And... To hear that that's happened you know, over 200 times in the country is something that's absolutely heartbreaking. And the first thing that comes to mind is, you know, yes, there needs to be outside investigations when, when, when something comes to light. But one thing I would want to say as an athlete, um, you know, when, when you get into that zone where you're with a team, you can all of a sudden, you can put the, the good of the team above the good of yourself. And I think sometimes in those situations, people have stayed quiet because it's like, well, I don't want to hurt the team. This is, this is my coach. But the one thing that I would definitely say is, is stepping out and making a statement and coming and bringing that to light is actually the best thing you could do for your team. Because if it's happening to you, it's probably happening to someone else. Yeah, and that's why even the toll-free line that's being instated. Is, yeah, is which is, is, an, is a wonderful Confidential toll-free line. Yeah, it, yeah. Wow. What would your message be to our leaders on this whole issue? Yeah, our, our leaders, I would definitely say if, if there's someone that's, that's, you know, bringing something to light, investigate it 100%. Um, but I think a lot of it is going to come down to the, to the kids in the locker room. Because if the kids in the locker room aren't going to be the ones to step forward, it's going to be very difficult to know what's actually going on. Mm -hmm. Well, definitely a prayer point. You know, really what we're talking about here as well is the whole realm of influence, right? Yes. Like the influence that coaches have, the influence yeah. that you had uh, yeah. and have as a former pro athlete. Uh, but I know one of your passions, David, is to use that influence to mm -hmm. be a force for good in mm -hmm. the world. And so you and your wife and two <laughs> little babies, you're going to Africa. Yeah. Tell us what you guys are up to. Yeah, so we joined just, a, just over a year ago. We joined an organization called World Embrace. And it's actually run by, by Reynolds and Kathy Maines, my, uh, my in-laws. I married into the family. And so they've been in the Uganda. Mains family, the Mains family. The David Mains yes. family. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and so they've been in Uganda for years. But the whole premise behind what we're doing is let's, as the church, let's come together and let's love and serve our community. You know, we live in a world where people long to feel that sense of belonging, that sense of love. And the church needs to be the one to show that. And so what we're doing over there, we're bringing the church together and we're doing strategic things that are just showing that impactful love of Jesus in the community. So just recently, we got 16 acres in the second biggest city in Uganda given to us by the government to be able to build and develop. And we're developing a 16-acre community center where there's going to be places for kids to play. There's going to be sports courts and sports fields with sports leagues uh, and just tons of other different things that are just really designed to bring the family together and allow the church to get out of the four walls mm -hmm. and love their community. Communities. Now, one of the reasons why this is so amazing is because of the history of this area, mm -hmm. particularly towards children. Yeah. Can you unpack that real quick? Yeah, so Gulu, our, our, our town, it's, um, it was the epicenter of everything that happened with, with Joseph Coney. Invisible Children did a documentary, but 
This, this man, Joseph Coney, he, he abducted over 66,000 child soldiers and created a, a child soldier army that ravaged the North for almost 20 years. And they, they've been kicked out of the country. They, the government drove them out in 2007. But really where things are at there is we're in a, a rebuilding phase there. You know, a lot of these, these young adults that are around my age, they were either living in independent displaced people's camps uh, or internally displaced people's camps or they were running from the rebels in the bush, you know, running away from gunfire. Mm. So the whole idea of what it means to be a kid is something that was really, really skewed there. And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to get the, engage the local leaders, empower them to come together, and let's show the next generation what it looks like to be a Christian leader, what it looks like to be a father and a mother, and what it looks like to, to, to live in family. Wow, powerful. You know, we often hear it said that one of Canada's destiny points is to bring healing to mm. the nations. And yes. when I'm hearing you say that, it's it's that in action. Now, I also want our supporters to know, people who partner with us on a monthly basis, that we have partnered with you in yes. sports yes. in Uganda. In Gula, we built two basketball courts. <laughs> yeah, and they have been like getting tons of use. Every time we drive by those basketball courts, they are full of kids playing, competing, wanting to get better. We've been able to put on sports camps. We're looking forward to actually being able to start the sports leagues uh, in, in this upcoming year or two. So we're really, really excited for that partnership. It's yeah. making a huge difference in kids' wow. lives. Wow, and I, I just want to look in the camera and just say thank you to you, our monthly partners, our special partners, excuse me, for helping us be a part of this moment. Now we let's really talk about the Champion Center. Yes. Crash Course, vision of, of what that is. Yeah, so we're starting with the Children's Park. Um, we're building a two acre children's park. Right now, we're in a city where 50% of the kids are 14, or 50% of the population is 14 and under. It's really, a, a, the whole demographics is pushed towards the younger. I believe 85% is 35 and under because of the war, because of disease. And so there's nothing right now really for the kids to play on. There's not one public free playground for the kids. So we're starting, we're building this two acre children's center. There's gonna be um, different uh, like uh, play equipment. There's gonna be sports fields. Um, and we just know that this is going to be something that is going to draw kids around from the entire region. We're going to have thousands of kids coming to play at this, at this place. But really what it is, it's all centered around a stage where the churches are going to be coming together, the church leaders are coming together to basically just cover the area in, in, in prayer and in worship and really get kids in a, in a spot where they're living in and around the presence of Jesus Christ. And we know that that's where lives are gonna be changed. Wow, amazing. And what's the website if people wanna find out more about yes. your work in Uganda? www.worldembrace.org. Amazing. Now, David, we just have a couple minutes left. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanna switch our focus back to Canada. Yes. You know, let's speak to the young person out there right now that has ambition to yeah. go into pro sports. Yeah. Do you have a message or a word of encouragement for those that have a desire to yeah. throw themselves into pro sports in Canada? Yeah, 100%. The, the first thing I would say is is don't be afraid to take risks you know for me my identity is not wrapped up in my sports as much as it is wrapped up in Jesus Christ and I know that I'm centered there and for every athlete I would say if that is your case it all of a sudden frees you up to you know even if things don't work out with sports it's gonna be okay your life's not gonna be fall fall apart because your life is built on something else mm -hmm. and for me really my factor for success is I was willing to take risks willing to go for it willing to put myself on the edge and when I did good things ended up happening. So they say, if you're going to make a mistake, make it at 100 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great one. <laughs> Amazing, David. And you got to show that ring one more time for yes. the camera here. Do we there we go. <laughs> <laughs> that is impressive. That's a bigger rock than your, your wife has on her finger, I'm assuming. Yeah, this was <laughs> when this just happened within the year that we got married. So she was like, oh, you give me a, a nice diamond ring and now look at yours. Okay, you <laughs> sewed it. You know, you reap there, right? Exactly. Uh, why don't we just close our time here with just praying a prayer prayer yeah. uh, for the sports, the sports leagues in Canada. Would you lead us in that? Yeah. Dear Father, I just pray that uh, you would just, as the church, Lord, you would give us a heart for those, for those kids, for those young adults, that their point of connection is sports. They're throwing themselves into sports with 100% with commitment. Lord, I just pray that, that pastors across this nation, Lord, would just get a heart for those kids and think about strategies, Lord, to bring these kids into relationship with you, Lord. I just pray healing over, over the wrongs that have been done in our country, Lord, and I just pray, Lord, that you would give people courage that if they're going through that, Lord, to, to just step up and to be able to be light in that situation. We love you so much, Jesus, and we just pray that you would bless our wonderful nation of Canada. In your name we pray.
Amen. Amen. David, thank you for being here with us today. Thank you for your great work in Uganda, and I'm looking forward to continuing to partner with you. It's my privilege. Thank, thank you. you.